Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you everything you need to know in order to successfully grow, harvest, and produce the foundational natural pesticide of the JDOM system. And that is the Jerusalem artichoke natural pesticide. So I'm going to say some things about it, and then I'm going to take you in the field and show you how it's done. Uh, so the Jerusalem artichoke is one of the three main uh, natural pesticide plants in the JDOM system. There is the Jerusalem artichoke, the uh, ginkgo tree, and the Korean pasque flower. Those are the ones that are really tried and true by the JDOM system over a number of years. And so those are the foundation of the system. Other plants can work, yes, but these ones work the best. And this is my experience as well. Uh, <clears throat> but the thing is that we don't grow Korean pasque flower in zone 5, northern Indiana. Uh, we barely can grow the, the ginkgo tree. Some people do, but that's kind of a slow growing, that's a long term thing. But the Jerusalem artichoke, also known as the sun choke, I believe, is uh, cold hardy down to zone three. So you have nothing to worry about. So it's a very hardy plant. Once you plant it, that's pretty much it. You will have it forever. It can be, people can call it invasive, you know, but uh, you just have to keep that in mind. So the way that it grows, and I will show you, um, but the way that it grows is that you put the tuber into the ground. It, it's a tuber, like a sweet potato in a way. And uh, you put the tuber in the ground, and then it will shoot up, it will put up shoots uh, that have flowers. They look like a small sunflower. And then it will put little runner roots and then another tuber bulb. And then little runner roots and another tuber bulb like that. And uh, they will stay in the ground so that uh, even if you think you get all of them, you won't get all of them. And there will still be some coming up the following year. But this is good for us because we want to use it as the natural pesticide. And so like pretty much everything in the JDOM system, it is for multiple things at once. It's not just for one little pest that you use this. You use this as a general preventative and uh, a pest repellent, a general insecticide. So what I do is, well, many years ago now, I bought the bulbs, I think, from Amazon or someplace like that. I'll put a link in the description to where you can buy the exact ones. Uh, so, you, But you only buy them once because you plant them and then they just keep coming back. So uh, then I make it in the fall time for the following year. That's how I usually do it. Although you can make it in the same year as well if you wanted to. Um, but it's best the first year to let them grow all the way. Although you can make some mid to late summer. Uh, but then you also have food if you like them. I don't particularly like the J Jerusalem artichoke uh, because it's full of like inulin, I believe is the term for it. So it's a really it's it's like a non-digestible carbohydrate in some way. I'm not that wild about it, but you might be. So it is food, definitely, if you know how to prepare it right. But I'm telling you this now, guys, so that you can get the stuff ordered and you can think about where you're going to plant it. And then come mid to late summer, you will be harvesting the ideal pesticide so let us get into it and then we'll come back and i'll tell you the specifics okay first thing we got to do is grow the jerusalem artichoke now they will come like this in the mail as tubers and they grow underground and they spread by these little thin uh root-like structures and then they produce more tubers so they will proliferate big time and uh, it really does not matter what kind of soil you plant these in. They will grow in just poor clay. They are very, very vigorous. You don't need to do anything special. And then they grow into this nice, tall, seven, eight, nine foot tall sunflower looking thing. They attract pollinators and they're really a wonderful plant to utilize. So then we're just going to cut up the plant into manageable chunks. You only need to make it so that you can get the whole plant into the stock pot. I am using my favorite tool ever, and that is the Skull Crusher from Topps Knives. Maybe I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to get one your own. I'm not affiliated. I'm just saying it is so useful and indestructible. But just chop it up all like this. It doesn't have to be super fine. Just anything you have to do to get it into the pot. And then knock off as much of the soil as you can from the roots. And then we're going to use the roots, we're going to use the tubers, we're going to use all of it. And for me, I like to uh, crush the tuber, although it's not totally necessary, I've always done it, where I just give the tuber a crush with the flat side of the knife, put it all into the pot, and then fill it with hot water, just enough to cover all the plant material, no more, no less. And then we will put it onto the stove on high heat. Go ahead and blast it with the heat until it gets up to the uh, rolling boil like this. We want to bring it up to the rolling boil and let it boil like this for about 10-15 minutes before putting the lid on and then turning it down to low. 
Okay, so here we've been letting it boil on low for about four hours, and it's pretty much ready because everything has been withered and it is nice and dark and rich. So every so often we've been stirring it, but this is about four hours. You could let it go anywhere between four and five hours until the tubers are total mush like this. Now it is ready to be processed. And so to do that, we are gonna put it into our half gallon mason jars and we're gonna can it like anything else. So get your supplies ready. And then we're going to put it through a double strainer like this. And we wanna make sure that we uh, leave the pot boiling so that we're actually pouring it into there as it's boiling. And then we put the lid on uh, hand tight, put them in the hot water bath method and we are going to boil it like this for about 30 minutes on a very, very mild boil just like this. And 30 minutes is enough and when we do it this way, we are going to successfully sterilize it enough where it can sit shelf stable all winter long uh, for a full year really. And uh, then you will be able to use it at your leisure. Okay, so at this point you have grown the Jerusalem artichoke, you have harvested it, and you've boiled it down, and you have the pesticide. It Now it is either late summer of the same year that you planted, or it's the following year, and you're going to use it now. Now, you're going to use it at a rate of anywhere from one ounce per gallon all the way to one cup per gallon. And if you're using a fog machine, like I'll show you in future videos, then you can use up to three cups per gallon in the fog machine. And you don't have to really worry about concentration problems, about using too much uh, for these kind of things. It's not gonna burn or hurt the plant. You just wanna make sure that you apply it only in the evening time or the very early morning before the sun gets on it. You never, you, generally you never apply anything to the leaves, even water, when the sun is blazing, okay? So when would we use this stuff? We will use it uh, if we notice any kind of pest infestation, cabbage worms, aphids, all that kind of stuff, it's good for all of it. But we always combine it with the wetting agent. Listen, I'm going to say it again. The effectiveness of this is imperatively dependent upon the wetting agent. So you want to always use the wetting agent with this stuff. So let us say that I want to do a preventative spray where I'm going to do it maybe once a week. It depends on your certain circumstance. So I will use one ounce a gallon of the wetting agent and I will use uh, one or two ounces a gallon of the Jerusalem artichoke liquid, okay? And we will apply that in the evening. But if we have an infestation, then we must bring out the heavy artillery. We can do three ounces a gallon of the wetting agent and one cup a gallon of the Jerusalem artichoke liquid. And then we're gonna spray. Uh, maybe three nights in a row to really get the problem under control. Okay, so that's pretty much it my friends If you feel like you gained something from the video give it a thumbs up Also leave a comment first thing that comes to mind helps the channel grow Also share the video to all your Facebook groups and stuff like that because we need more people to understand this knowledge My friends also check out the links in the description if you want to make a donation to the PayPal account There's a link there also if you want there's all kinds of good stuff in the description uh, links to good stuff So check it out and I will direct you to this video here. If you have not already made the wedding agent, watch this video a number of times and then make it yourself, my friends, because the season is coming.